little sleepy today. Wake up. You're listening to oh, Inside sure. Real Estate, where we go deep into the minds of real estate professionals. Here are your hosts, Paul and Sal. Sal! <laughs> how are you, man? I'm good, how are you? Talk into the mic, buddy. Just, just please keep going. Okay. <laughs> Brad? Morning. You just keep showing up to the show. Here I am. You're not really even like supposed to be part of the show. Yeah. Yeah, you're here. I don't care. Uh, what's up, everyone? Paul Foslag is here. Uh, we've got a special guest today, Tori Sheffer from Sotheby's International. Realty. Of, <laughs> realty throughout the world. Uh, out of uh, Birmingham. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> he looks very Birmingham for the folks on, on the that can see you. you good-looking chap. What does that mean? You know what it means. <laughs> Everybody knows. So I didn't grow up in Birmingham. Oh, okay. So I grew up Coast about point. 30 miles west. Where? Uh, in Heartland. Oh, really? Yep. Got it. Okay. So, um, Brad does not look Birmingham. Nope. Uh, I did not grow up in Birmingham. Well, he's not dressed or Birmingham anyway. Near Birmingham. He never dresses Birmingham, dude. This I don't is, dress, this act, is as or talk. Dressed Birmingham. up as he gets, actually, yeah. surprisingly. Not okay. Sure. So we got a good show for you today, guys. Uh, we're gonna. I want to talk a little bit about tariffs, what that does to the market. Right, and right off the bat, you gotta go there. We're not right off the bat. We're gonna we're circle back. Uh, I want to talk about the Fed, what they did last week, how it affected the market. Uh, I want to talk about new construction starts and also a little bit about m- millennials because that you know everybody wants to talk about. Mil- you're a millennial, right? I am a millennial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sal's a millennial. We're we talking about new construction with housing or just construction just sh- in Michigan. Shut up. We'll, we'll get to that. Tori, t- give us a little bit of a, 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 your background, how you got in the business, how long you've been doing. I know. By the way, congratulations! You just got married a little bit ago, right? <coughs> yeah, a month ago. Wow. Actually, a month ago Condolences. yesterday. Congratulations! Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys have a one month anniversary? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> so, well, congrats, man. Congrats on the marriage. Uh, I know that that's gonna be great for you. Uh, hopefully, it's your first one and only one. Uh, so, tell us a little bit about your background, man. So, my background um, got into real estate three years ago. Okay. Um, started out at Berkshire Hathaway in Saginaw, actually, because I was going to school at the time. So, I got my first listing. I was in my apartment in college actually in my boxers that's cold calling well, that's a good image and it was on the market for that's five visual. five years off and on Whoa. with another agent and then i listed oh. it and we sold it and i did both sides cash in like 25 days so well, okay i was pumped but it took me eight months to get to that point so <laughs> got it so you're in college you're like hey I, i'm gonna try this real estate thing why not right get, yeah well get, i saw a million dollar listing i was like that's sexy i want to do it <laughs> <laughs> so, in saginaw it's tough to, <sighs> it's to not, do million dollar it's listing not exactly a million dollar <laughs> listing area right so yeah but I, I you know i grew up in heartland you know the average home is probably 250 300 yeah um and then I always knew that I wanted to sell big houses, so I came out to Birmingham at Sotheby's, and uh, yeah. it's been good so far. That's so awesome, man. Cruising. Just so the audience knows, that's across the country. So Saginaw is north of uh, Metro Detroit. Uh, nickname is Sag Nasty. Yes. Sag-nasty. Yeah. <laughs> Sag- Sag-nasty. For a reason. That is interesting, though, to start in college. Yeah. You know, so were you thinking of it Cold as college. like a side job, or and obviously, you know, going to college um, Not and ending like, up in our yeah. business, right? It's almost like. Why to go to college, right? Right. right. I mean, that's <laughs> everyone asks themselves. But it, every but day. I always f- find that you know to be the case. Obviously, after you go to college, so it's interesting that you started in college. Where was the uh, the thought with that? Like, did you think you were going to do this full time, or was it like a, a side hustle, or you just wanted to see what it was about? So, I thought <coughs> I thought I was going to do it full time. I was trying to figure out kind of what I was going to mm-hmm. do after college, and then I figured, why not start right now? Yeah. So I so I did. It's probably the right thing to do. And man. then, it, but then I was trying to do. So I was I was going to. So I'd go to my classes, and then I'd cold call in the morning from like nine to twelve. And then I had a class at one, so I'd go class. And then I had a night cl- c- couple night classes, so I'd do that. And then uh, you know I'd be in the office whenever I could. And then so people started to recognize me at school because I was always dressed up like you know like I am now. Right. And they'd mm-hmm. be like, "Who's this guy? You know what is." Why What's is he, he doing? Right. Is he a professor? Right. Jehovah, right. Jehovah and I didn't talk to anyone at school either besides the couple of guys I lived with either. So nobody really knew who I was, and I didn't have any friends. So <laughs> I, was just, <laughs> I was just there, just there, there. to work and, yeah. and get through it. I kind of felt like I was in jail, you know, put your time in yeah. and get out. So That's really interesting because um, a lot of other people's experiences in college, their side hustle is like giving plasma to, so they can yes. buy the keg for that night, right? Yeah. yeah. That wasn't you. No, that wasn't me. Yeah, okay. So. That's good. So you, I mean, you a motivated kid young early like you started off like right off the bat like making cold calls like that's kind of crazy for like a college kid to even be like thinking like that right yeah it was a little different yeah i guess but it was a lot uh, different 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, yeah, I, mean, I, I, mean I, I wanted to, to go for it, and I've yeah. always wanted to make yeah. something out of myself, so here I am still working at it. That's awesome. So so in your opinion, <clears throat> I mean, you, you do deal with, like, probably the higher end of the market a lot, right? Yeah, so I'm actually doing pictures after this today at noon for a, new, a listing I got in Clarkson for a million five. So right. my average listing is still it covers right around there. What, so what are you seeing in that market? Because it, is, it, it, it isn't the bulk of the market. Obviously, it's, a, it's the top end of the market. And we, all, we a lot of times we talk about you know the two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollar house right now. Right. What, what are you seeing at the top end of the market? Uh, as a, is it a little bit softer than it was in your opinion, or is it heating up? What do you see? So this last week has been heating up. School just got out, so a lot of these buyers who are families, you know, they're they can get out and really get after it as far as finding a house. A lot of people like to move during the summer. Same you know same scenario as a lower price house. But it is definitely softer, and a lot of my listings are kind of like on the fringe areas. So fringe areas, um, kind of saying Birmingham is the center of it. Right. And then I have the one in Clarkson. I have Novi, Fenton, Green Oak, which is like Brighton Schools, but it's close to Ann Arbor. A lot of people commute from there. There's a ton of like, like the CEO of Little Caesars lives in that same subdivision. So right. It's uh, you know, they're kind of fringe areas that are always slower. But this is definitely, uh, you know, a slow time for those those spots, just because people are moving into Birmingham, moving into towns. So. Yeah, with with listings like that, um, what would you say like the average time on market is in comparison to like, and I, obviously I'm sure once in a while you do list, you know, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar homes. Right? right. Yeah. So I just did one actually in in uh, Utica, two seventy five. We listed it on. I forget. It was it was maybe a week ago, and yeah. we we. St- had a full full price offer the first weekend so right it was which is fast, you yeah. know how that market works right i mean it's right. just not a lot of inventory things move very quickly you know list it close quick and in comparison to like a million and a half dollar listing right there's a lot of moving parts there right in right. regards to the complication of those people's lives who can afford a, a million exactly. and a half dollar home, right? And you have to—they are a different client. For it's sure. the right buyer. Yeah. It's it's them then finding a new place to go, which you know, probably everyone <coughs> would be on board for like a ninety day closing, right? You know? Yeah, and then so like the with the expensive houses, a lot of times it's the the priorities are a lot different, right? Nobody right. needs a million dollar house, a million and a mm-hmm. half dollar house. Nobody needs that. So, um, in these lower price houses, you know, people need to move. It's like mm-hmm. I'm renting my my lease ends in august i gotta be out by july so Mm -hmm. um in a million dollar million and a half dollar that's not the case so people are taking their time with inspections they're going over it with a you know with comb right to say you know this 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 and this needs to get fixed and you're seeing people spend you know 20 30 40 50 thousand dollars on their house before they even sell it Right. Rather than, you know, and the wiggle room and negotiation walls. could be hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands. So on a on a percentage wise, it usually doesn't, um, <coughs> you know, it's similar. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it, but a 10 percent discount on a million dollars is a 100 grand. So which the reality of, of such might hit, you know, someone who thinks their house is worth one point five and really people are only w- willing to pay like 1.3 right exactly so yeah so that's i mean the the uh the hidden lakes house that i have we have it listed at one six and we've had offers at a million and a quarter a million mm-hmm. three but you know it's 250 grand difference it's three right. grand difference so from a you know basic standpoint the sellers are sitting here feeling like i don't want to give this guy three hundred thousand dollars off of my house because it's three still right. it's still three hundred thousand dollars right. right you can do a lot with that right it's not <laughs> uh, percentage wise it's probably the same percentage of like a thirty thousand dollar reduction right. or something else well right? and and they have the luxury of probably waiting it out right right they're it's like screw it i don't care do you see that often in the higher end market of of not getting a full price offer, or uh, I would see not many bidding wars probably. But do you generally say you list for a million five and uh, in hopes to sell at one two or one three, or is you are you listing at one five hoping and, and knowing that one five is going to be what the price is? Is it typically lower? Yeah. So, <coughs> so what I always say to the sellers is, it, you know, we'll list it here. I don't hate this price. It's a good list price. Um, usually, you'll see it going two or three hundred thousand dollars lower, but how I always pitch it is, you know, we can sit, we can fish or we can sell it. So all these people, they have plenty of money. They don't need to sell. You know, it doesn't matter if they sell in a month or two months. Yeah, you know sit that on it. that holding cost doesn't matter to them right. compared to the two three hundred grand they're they're hoping to sit on. So, right. um, in this 
you know, in this scenario, I, I would say it's very, very common unless you're right in Birmingham. Birmingham, you see you see full price go. You see you yeah. know, a couple different bidding wars. All right. um, Bloomfield, too, on the houses that are done well. But then in Bloomfield as well, <coughs> you see houses sit on the market for a year, two years. And then, <coughs> and then eventually the sellers will get, you know, more realistic. They're like, all right, let's be done with this. I'm quit ready to be done playing the game. What um, I see in the higher end market sometimes is that, you know, the, a house is big. It's like was very nice. 10 years ago it hasn't been updated the owners think it's still worth <coughs> two million right where the guy at that high-end market generally speaking can afford to buy a house that's already done he doesn't want to go in there and do a lot of work a lot of times right potentially right. so these houses that people believe are worth quite a bit just haven't been updated and they don't right. look right right, right. and if, if you want to get it show ready they have to spend a lot of money to kind of update it and if they're, they're going to update it why move at that point right yeah. So there's like a there's like a weird thing at the high end market where I see these houses that are really beautiful ten years ago, fifteen years ago. Right. Right. So what do you do in a situation where you get a house that, that hasn't been updated, the person thinks it's worth two million, but that two million dollar buyer doesn't want to buy that house? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean a a two million dollar buyer is gonna want a house that's done. They don't wanna they wanna bring their toothbrush and their clothes and right. you know, move in. Right. So um that's you know that's a huge factor is having it updated and like i said that's that's why some people are spending you know 50 grand to update some of the parts of their house and 50 grand in a million and a half dollar house doesn't really go that no, far it's, so like a, it's like a fridge it does. right it's like a <laughs> fridge and like right? maybe counter a counter yeah, right. yeah. So. they uh and that is interesting because the amount of money you can put into customizing a home of a of a higher square footage right let's say it's a 6000 square foot house right right I mean, you redo the floors in it, you're going to sink 200 Gs into it, right? Right. <laughs> so it's like, hey, we redid all the floors, and if that's not to that buyer's particular liking, right, they're thinking, well, i got to redo this, and that costs 200 grand. Exactly. Right? So <coughs> it's almost like a car. You know, you, you put your money into it, and you upgrade it to your liking, but... You never get it out because it's you never your liking it and not the next yeah. guy's. What do you, uh, what's the price per square foot in Birmingham right now? Just so the audience understands, Birmingham is a very, very affluent downtown type area. It's blown up over the last five, ten years. It's like uh, <coughs> it's like the Manhattan of Metro Detroit. If you want to, I mean, like that's like, how I always like try back to it to, too. right. It's like it is the it's it's a very affluent area that's blown up, but the price per square foot has gone absolutely haywire. I think. Yeah, so so last year I remember last early early last spring we were looking at like, you know, mid threes, low threes on yeah. these new construction houses and people were like, you know, this is crazy, three hundred and fifty a foot. Like yep. you gotta be nuts. Yep. And now we're seeing like four hundred and fifty a foot. So it's I mean it's 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 like crazy. It's like <laughs> that that's a lot. Right. Four hundred and fifty dollars for a square foot. I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah. That's, that's nuts. yeah, it's a lot it's it's a lot. I mean it, but but it, there's no lack of demand. The, right. I mean, the market mm -hmm. is holding that, and that they're, it's dictating that it's price. Crazy. That's the, and if you and you want to move in, and then that's the other side of it is Birmingham taxes are not cheap. No, right? Like like let's say like a seven hundred fifty thousand dollars house. What are the taxes generally speaking? Taxes will be roughly fifteen grand. Fifteen G's. Mm -hmm. You know, you're spending over a thousand dollars a month just in taxes. Right, like so, it, it, you got to be able to afford to live there. But the, but for that, you get great city services. The downtown's beautiful. Horrible parking. The parking situation's <laughs> bad. The parking situation's got to get fixed. I mean, so downtown, I have I have a, horrible. I have a parking in, in our building. So yeah. I've never had an issue. It's like a dream for me. Yeah, yeah. The, you're 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 like one Lucky. of the very few. Like we were gonna like have our building yeah. down there, just trying to figure out parking down there. Like to like work down. It's very difficult. It, it, you can't, thing even too get, you can't even get spots because it's like a waiting list. As, get, yeah. like, as we talk and we're in Royal Oak and have to walk, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, our parking situation is not good yeah. either. They're doing constru I mean, yeah. construction. I mean, there's construction everywhere. I mean, right now, Woodward in Birmingham I mean, par is just... Parking's just not ideal in a in a city center or a, a walkable downtown. But that, that Not is uh, right. right. I mean, same thing like but Chicago. You pay for parking same spots. Same thing with, with Birmingham, with Royal Oak, with, uh, you know, areas like that, like downtown Milford. It's the houses that are like close to that city center that you know if if it is of decent square footage and it's walkable 
you're right. going to get top dollar. Yeah, the walkability is huge. So Yeah. But at the same time, we're also seeing, like you said, houses on the fringes where there's like, <clears throat> like you're getting a lot better price per square foot. You're getting more land. There's also an, an argument for that. Some, you know, good schools like in Novi and, and uh, in right. uh, well, Northville. The, I would feel like those fringe listings are the higher square foot, right? I yeah. mean, you have your million dollar house in Birmingham that's 2,500 square foot. And right. then you've got your $4,000, you know, heater on a lake that's. 1.5, right? And right. They're, yeah. They're the same price, but they're very different in the amenities that they offer. Right. You got to drive different people that are going to buy those houses too. Completely yeah. different D- people. Some totally people don't different. care about. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got that's like where you you raise your family, right? Well, you know, Birmingham is a pretty good place to raise a family, man. Sure, but you, the walkability, this, that, the traffic. I mean, it's it's just probably a different mindset for a different person, like you said. Yeah, it's all different. So yeah, so a lot. Of, I mean, a lot of the <coughs> houses, like a couple of the houses that I have, like the Clarkson one, would probably be double if it was in Bloomfield Hills. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, it's on yeah. twenty acres, wow. so it would be you know has yeah. a tennis court, has two ponds, has a full. Um, THX Home Theater has an mm-hmm. English pub, and the guy's actually from England, so it's like a legitimate English pub. He built an basement. English pub. Yeah, yeah, and it's cool. What does he do? <sighs> I don't know what he does. Can I back, a, can I back I out of like my house and go to that business. one? <laughs> I, don't, I want an English pub in my basement. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? that'd I be pretty I want sweet. the theater. All right. So, so are you seeing a lot of... Con- sorry, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. If you have a question... Well, we were talking it. about construction. I was wondering if, you see, if he's seeing a lot of new construction in that market or not. Yes. Yeah, a lot a of new construction. Of yeah, yeah, a lot of market. new construction in that market. And actually, um, another agent in our office just just listed a new uh, townhouse development that's coming to both to Royal Oak and to Birmingham. And I think the Royal Oak ones are starting at four fifty. Mm-hmm. The Birmingham ones are starting at like two million. <laughs> so if that'll, g- I mean, the Birmingham <laughs> ones are double the size, but there's, you know, yeah, that'll give you the the price. the price idea of you know where people mm-hmm. are. They're building a development that's going to start at two million, just like the Brookstone one that's. Right on Woodward. Yeah, that's like more than halfway sold out, and that starts at two, maybe two five. So, so, so the audience understands it's like the listens to us in like Zimbabwe, which I don't, you know, the one person. <laughs> uh, so Royal Oak and Birmingham are kind of analogous that they're both like downtown areas, but they're very different, and they're only about three miles apart. They're yeah, not, they're not far apart, right? I mean, fourteen miles splits them apart. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And so, um, they're both. Very vibrant downtowns, but very different in their own ways, right? Uh, it, but Birmingham, it, I w- Birmingham is more like middle-aged career. You would call set. it. You would call it bougie. I'm super bougie. <laughs> Not <laughs> bad and bougie. You'd just call it, super yeah, just, bougie. Just really bougie. Royal Oak is more young millennial, kind of yeah. hip hipster, like a San Francisco or something, like young vibe. I like. I like your description. That's good. I like your throwing. Well, the but out it there. but it's all developing. You know, I mean, n- I don't know if Birmingham was necessarily ever like Royal Oak was 10, 15 years ago, right? But um, as Royal Oak, it's it's almost like a, to a degree, like a gentrification, right? 100%. Like, there's, no, there's a weird place like as, your house, the as the average, you know, house comes to three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000, right? Right. You know, then you start moving on to the, to the next area. It's like a... a Spreading on a map, right? Ferndale, Hazel Park, Oak Park now has homes, which is funny because uh, we were talking about this like six, seven months ago. I was like, you know, it'd probably be a good idea to buy a house in Oak Park, yeah. right? And now and I it see it's, it's the spillover <coughs> from everything else, right? Yep. Yeah. There's four hundred thousand dollar homes, new construction being built or, or listed in Oak Park right so now. So that was my cool. listing. Was it? I just dropped it because we were about a hundred thousand overpriced. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so that's hilarious. Yeah, but. It's but it's interesting, that. right? You took a shot at 400k. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right? it's, it was it was Berkeley Schools. It was a brand new construction. Mm-hmm. It's a decent house. You know, there's there's a few things that it needed. It didn't have a garage. I think put it across factor, the street and it's 450. Put it easy, across right? the street, it's 450 easy. That's crazy. All right, so I, I do want to hit these topics before uh, we run out of time. Um, first and foremost, the Fed met last week. Um, kind of really kind of freaked out the market for a minute because they basically they were planning on having three rate hikes this year. They basically announced that the, 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 they're worried about the, the, the economy overheating. They said it's really healthy. Jobs are really good. So because of that, they feel okay raising four times instead of three. The market did not expect that. There was this massive knee-jerk reaction. Uh, the, ten, the 10-year yield or bond j- jumped up. Rates went up. We got repriced in our, in our business, in the mortgage industry. We got repriced like two or three times that day. 
Then all of a sudden, like the reality set in, they're like, well, that's not really that big of a deal. It's really weird how the market works, right? And everybody's like, uh, and then it just went right back down. It was it was a really was weird spike. It was nuts. It was right. I did a whole thing. I'm like, oh, rates are going to go up now. You know, I, I was not expecting that. Um, I guess in my mind, to me, what that means is the Fed just really believes that our market right now is really healthy. Right? They feel like the market can sustain uh, a rate hike. And after the initial shock that the, the that the investors and all the people that move money around, after that initial shock, everybody also realized, like, wait a minute. It's actually pretty good. Like, our market's really healthy. We can actually sustain it. And by seeing it drop back down made me realize, like, like the, the market's not getting spooked right now. I mean, it did for a second. But overall, when senses came, when people came to their senses, they're like, it's not a big deal, uh, which was interesting because initially, I mean, it was, it was pretty bad. It was like a bloodbath, really. So, I mean, we're looking at rates. We're like, oh, my God, we just got massacred. No, I think it's, it wasn't even that bad, that much higher. It was just more or less like... You know, as a loan officer or someone who's watching that, you think, man, are we at the bottom of the next spike, right? Is it going to go up another quarter point? Because in reality, right, like things have been pretty low. I mean, the lowest it it was was right before uh, the election, right? Mm -hmm. And then it kind of spiked up. But really at the beginning of the year, this year was when things really went up, you know, and it was like, okay. We were selling and, and closing loans at four percent, and now if you're putting twenty percent down and have great credit, you're at at the lowest probably four and a half. So you know, a half percent increase which is, yeah within a two month period it was pretty aggressive. Yeah, and we uh, hadn't seen that in a long those time. Right? Who, yeah, it was uh, tough to explain, but at the same time, <laughs> I mean, don't get it. yeah, you know, they're like, what? Uh, but your, it's kinda, your it's kinda rates crazy. at four and a half. Because they're like, I, like, my buddy got three point seven five. Yeah, yeah, that was last a year. year and a half yeah. ago, brother. Well, no, even if it was like. My friend just closed at four percent fifteen days ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's yeah. like, well, what, what kind of loan was it? Was it? I mean, was it? It doesn't matter. Apples to apples. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, right. that's what but, I'm saying. You know, or you, you know, understand. people who are moving now and and did lock in and had a loan at three point seven five are now, you know, man, we got to go a whole point higher. But right? it's ki- but it's kind of funny that we're just talking about our reactions to what the market did, and we're like, I don't, we don't understand why this always happens. But our immediate reaction was, man. We're, it's, everything's gonna spike. We gotta get shit's gonna get crazy. It's the same. It's like just go one step up the chain. And it's the same thing that uh, that happens when the Fed announces the markets go crazy because they're all like, "What's gonna happen? Is the Fed what, what's gonna what are they gonna do?" Yeah, it's a knee jerk so reaction. It's, it's, it's just crazy. It's, a, it's fear. But we have the same reaction. Just one right. step down the chain. Well, here's and correct. Ultimately, you know, if in a lot of things, you know, you kind of have to just what are you gonna do, right? Are you gonna throw you, a fit you, that the rates went up? Are you, you think that's gonna get it lower? Right, it's not a yeah. You can't really control. It's, it's like, like the, the weather. weather. It's like shit. It's yeah. raining today. Yeah. And then, well, yeah. All right, I'm over it now. What are we gonna do? You about guys it? both said weather at the same time. That's cute. Yeah. That was really Thanks. cute. Great well, minds think yeah. alike. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sal did use a big word. Earlier. I know he did. He did. All right, we'll we'll move on from that. How about how about these tariffs, boys? A little trade war. Haven't even been watching it, man. I know, but we're gonna have a trade war, but guys, with China. Well, let's just do it. Let's just mess with China, and they, they'll mess with us, and we'll just like. I heard there's a really big problem with Canadians stealing and smuggling shoes into back into Canada. Where did you hear really? this? Trump said, "I swear to God." Uh, moving on. What are you talking about right now? I'll show you later. Well, it is there is I swear, I swear that's what some interesting things like do you know it's a lot cheaper, or at least a few years ago it was so much cheaper to buy a used car in Canada. It still is. It still yeah, is. like you can go there, buy the car. The exchange. Well, my buddy but was just talking you're not about that. To do that, you know. The exchange it's rate is so like different, like because your your our dollar goes so much farther there. You get massive discounts on anything you buy in Canada, which is for us right across the border. And I know a lot of people that buy cars in Canada and bring them over, mm-hmm. or prescription drugs. Also, prescription drugs. Or ninety percent of any consumer goods. Also, marijuana. Yeah. I think it's legal <laughs> over there right now. Well, I, it, Lots of marijuana in Canada, right? No I idea. Don't know. <laughs> um, I told you what I did in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're you're like straight and narrow. I'm What's like, oh, marijuana, <laughs> Canada. Let's go get some marijuana. Uh, yeah, no, because look, here's what I here's the thing. I I don't disagree that like Donald Trump is trying to do the right thing because he's think, looking at this and saying there's some imbalance there and he's trying to like write it. What? You're so liberal, dude. I, you're just uh, so liberal. I don't you're know why realistic. you always want to bring these topics up. I'm just being honest, <laughs> like. 
I like I think he's mentally trying to do the right thing, but I don't think this is very smart to poke the bear. They are the largest economy but in the world. I think and we get, I think it's we funny get, that we sit here and talk about this and we don't know shit about the half of it. Correct. So we could sit here and talk all day about politics. All and I know and is that, the effect. So just so everybody but knows, you just see what you what you find on when you click Google News, you know. And we're gonna sit here and we talk like we know about trade wars and tariffs. And no, stuff. no, no, no. But to your point, you're, I, I think <laughs> yeah. you're 100 percent right. But what I do know, <laughs> I mean, what what, <laughs> like, what I do know, though, listen, it's a joke. W- just listen. What I do know is that the markets are reacting poorly to it, that are actually driving ra- interest rates down, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it has its effect I mean, on the market based upon the reaction of investors. So that's right? tangible to me, tr- right? Right, right. But true institutional investors that actually move markets know what the hell's going on, and they, they probably Which see is why the Dow have, dropped 350 points yesterday. That's my point. The market doesn't like these tariffs, right? And when, when, when money's coming out of the stock market, where does it go? It goes to safety. It goes to the bond market, Right. And that's why it's driving rates down. That's why we actually have seen the lowest rates that we've seen all year. Well, not all year, but in recent weeks, right now. Yeah, it's because of this. And we'll be war. back up in in another week. You know, it's just it is what it is. It's it's the You're weather. Salty. Why are you so salty today? <laughs> I don't know because <laughs> it's almost like I I just I'm so sick of talking about it and and talking to people about it. It's like, dude, you talk about tariffs all the time. No, it's just the, the just the up and it. down. You know, it's like, it, yeah. Rates are going to go up. They're going to go down. It is what it is. Just ride it out. It's kind of you know? a show, though, man. we got to kind of explain that stuff. You're just so soft. I understand, but... We, we don't got to explain tariffs. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, oh, we'll move on. Google it. All right. Uh, <laughs> Google tariffs, guys, if you don't. No, I like, I like the explanation, though. Yeah. All right. I think there, it, there is uh, an, there's an overt reaction to this tariff thing, which I think is notable because the market doesn't like it, right? It's going to rebound a little bit today because it, it dropped over the last few days, but... Our, our stock market is not having a good time right well, now. Well, why doesn't the market like it? Because, what because it, essentially, what is it? It's a it's just a it's pissing match between. But us it and also Canada. raises the price of goods. Uh, like yeah, it's a giant pissing match. Who's yeah. got the bigger dick? Doesn't Whoa. matter. That's, I mean, that's all it is. Uh, Trump's got small hands. Uh, but he's, <laughs> believe well, me, but, but his button is bigger. If you don't forget, yeah, uh, yeah there <laughs> <is>. it <laughs> works. There he goes. What was that? Do that again. That's what he does. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I just think it's notable. I think it's interesting to see what's going to happen with this thing. I, 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 I mean, it is causing some turmoil in our market. I, I what's going to happen is, and probably me being salty again, is in <laughs> two weeks, no one's going to talk about it, and the market's going to be back. And Disagree. I disagree about that. I think this it's is going to talk about more and more and more and more and more. It's, it's going to be like that one song on the radio all happens, summer so long. You just you hate know? hearing. It's like, uh, it's like everything, right? It's just something that happens and the market's going to react and they're going to rebound or they're going to go down it but it, it it is what it is it's like should you pull your money out because of this tariff thing where do you get your heartburn medication from uh cvs not from canada no so what kind of question i was, I was just curious <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's, it's very odd to what you just I mean, you're gonna start paying way more for it if it was for canada <laughs> okay so uh, yeah i drive across the border to take <laughs> Preva said, bro. <laughs> uh, is, is, is that what it is? Yeah, I saved $10 yeah, a no, year. Yeah, no, that's what insurance <laughs> is for. It's good um, yeah, I think it'll be just really interesting to see what happens with this whole thing. I, d- dude, I, what I'm, j- I, I've been very bullish on a lot of the things, a lot of things real estate lately. Um, I believe in the market. I believe that there's going to be a lot of demand. I, feel, I believe that there's going to be less inventory, which is just going to keep the market very like healthy, I guess. I am, in my mind... St- believing starting to believe that this might be the year at the end of this year where we start seeing things kind of slowing down a little bit i don't know it just it's starting to feel like you know we've been on this nine year growth run and over the last nine ten years we've been growing quite a bit and at some point and i'm not i don't want to just say this as a say but at some point i do think that we have to have a correction right to a degree, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in my mind, it would be, for the majority of the market, we would ha- we would see a correction or a slowdown. But I think in the high end market, you'd probably see an increase because I feel like there's probably a lag time there. With as the economy booms, there's a lot of activity in the lower markets because everyone's. I think it's the opposite. I think the higher market booms earlier. You think and so? And then you see so, some some fracturing in the higher market prior to well, seeing in the lower market. Why, why is the lower market? Would you would, would you, you agree, agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. So so because the higher end market. Well, it's they're the ones that are driving luxury. the market. They're the ones making the money. Trickle down economics, dude. Right? They're, they're they're the ones. Ju- yeah, they're making the money. But I feel like if the 
if the lower end market's You're booming, wrong. it's because the economy is booming and they're making more money. And now that they have more money, they want to move to a different right. House. But they're the first ones to start seeing the cracks, and they're the ones that start s- slowing down. Exactly. Right. So they're the ones that are feeling. I get it. The high end pinch. I was wrong. Right. You are. Yeah. One hundred percent wrong. Well, and mind you too, it's like you know, um, why are condos so hard to finance? Right. Because of all of the second homes that were luxuries versus necessities. Right. So the two million dollar house is more of a luxury. Right. And that market might slow down faster. So what are you saying? Are you seeing some softening like over the last two years, let's say, right, uh, that you the market got really hot and, you know, the luxury market probably boomed. And then now are you seeing a slowdown right now, Tori, or are you like are you feeling like it's the same? Not a not a whole lot in the in the luxury market as far as you know the houses are still moving they're selling every single day right. they're closing every day they're going pending new ones are coming up like I said the yep. one I have in Clarkson yeah, coming the, today so the market's good and <laughs> there is no doubt that there will be a correction or a quote unquote crash I mean it, it's just inevitable I don't it's like the word crash I think correct I, nothing's sure. no I don't think it's, it'll crash. it's just what happens right I, is it going to crash as hard as it did last time no but will there be a correction yeah. No, it's like, it's, it's like breathing, right? Like at some point you've got to take like exhale and like like there'll be like a like. I mean, it's it's like it's like war, you know. Unfortunately, war. they mean they <laughs> sounds like a dark place today. Jesus I, Christ, <laughs> man! I know, but it's like you know we could sit here and and war you could pretend death. like there's world peace, but I mean it's inevitable. It's just man. inevitable. Something's gonna pop off. Something's the, the, gonna pop off. What's inevitable is there's always gonna be buyers out there in all markets. Yeah, always. There's always there's always going to be a market. And any other listening down, that like I mean, white glove service, high end properties, Tori, how do they get a hold of you? Call me. 248 897 1444. Are we done with the show? Is that I, mean, I think we are, man. No, we got, we got to. I just wanted to p- give him a plug. We haven't talked about him at I all. don't hate it. Give me a plug. Yeah. Well, all right, Tori, <laughs> <laughs> tell everybody how they can get a hold of you. Say <laughs> that again. We haven't really talked about him at all. Where like, like they can find him. Yeah, we no. We usually so do that at the end of the show every time. We do the beginning too. Yeah, so you can call me, text me, email me, Instagram. Everything is Tori Sheffer, 248-897-1444. Good. Do you do a lot of text business? I do do it. I do a ton of text. Everybody I mean, texts. Nobody wants to talk on the phone anymore. Right. It, I, just, I mean, it just baffles me. A high-end transaction like that, $2 million. They're the ones that text, text the most. That's Are you kidding me? Either. They don't want to spend a f- like. Yeah, they like, don't want to talk to you. No, they want, hey, man, get this done. Do the, like, like uh, it, depends, it depends actually on their age. Really? So, so some of them who are <coughs> older, they want to meet face to face, which I do all the time, and right. most of the time. So, um, but then there's some things that you just you just text about it. It's like, right. hey, mm-hmm. this you know, they came down fifty grand on you know what their price or whatever may change, or the inspection went good, blah blah blah. So it's really basic. I mean, they don't want, they don't care to spend time in small talk with you, and you know maybe be coddled on those smaller dumb things. Right. They're just like, tell me what it is and let's move on. Well, well, what do you, I mean, Jesus. I was going to ask him what his typical demographic is as a, as a cl- for a client. It's wide, all over the place, all over the place. I mean, I've people I've, with money. Yeah. I've <laughs> 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 it's generally a younger like, no, crowd. Whoever older. whoever has money, dude. Yeah, you know what I mean. Older. I mean, just dumb yeah. question after dumb. Which question. Which is I was funny because that is probably the most variable demographic there is. Is probably people who have money, right? Like right. you could have trust fund kid. Who just turned twenty five and is buying a million dollar house? Which I haven't or had, but if you are one, call me. <laughs> <laughs> you could be old money. You could be a rapper. You could be, you know, anything. Right. Really. You know what I've had actually? When you mentioned rapper, so I've had different rappers reach out to me and say, "Hey, can I film this video at your house or <laughs> yeah, one of your listings?" I so need to use your pool, dog. I've I've had it a, a couple, probably three or four different times, and then the other thing that I've gotten is people want to do wedding pictures at the houses. So it's like, really? hey, you know, this house is really cool. Can I take my wedding Isn't pictures? Is that weird there? though? That's like somebody else's house. Yeah, really no, they, I mean the sellers would never allow it. I'd say no, but um, yeah, yeah, it's just weird. It's hey, can I bring my my girls over and my bottles of Moet and like uh, spray bottles everywhere and, r- and do a <laughs> rap video? Right. It's like, someone well, do you have a hundred? Someone grand? says yes. Right. You I know, mean, it's, it's happened. People, people do it. Well, if you look at Meanwhile, I don't know. those rappers are living like in a trailer and like, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Like, it's so funny to me, dude. They're yeah. gonna sing about how they're, you know, coming I, up. There's also a thing that where people go, like will rent a private plane for like an hour so they can take, take photos take, in, just to take pictures in. Like, yeah, wild move. Like, I'm gonna get a private plane so I can look like I'm balling out of control. That's really interesting. Um, okay, speaking of rappers, ex- Extension. 
died over the week. Yeah, this mm-hmm. rapper got shot and killed. Twenty year olds, God rest his soul. Just wanted to bring that up. Um, all right, I think horrible that, person from what I hear. Horrible, <laughs> horrible, horrible human. <laughs> Absolutely a horrible human. Yeah, yeah. Who was the guy that shot him or the rapper? The rapper. The rapper. Probably both. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, well, point. for sure. I mean, someone murdered someone. They're not a good person. Right. It's not like a mercy killing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. I mean, you, you guys really you just derailed the show when you just went in for the, the good for me. Jessica, so how, how are you, Jessica? I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Jessica, Jessica was late today. She got stuck in traffic. She was actually not. Why, why are you going to put me on class <laughs> like that? She actually was here on time. Man. She thought Dor- she was going to be late. Was, everybody was late. Actually, technically, since you guys started so late, I was early. Oh. So. oh. <laughs> True. Good good True. Well, That's Jessica, a fair point. And I wasn't late either because you texted me and said you were, go- we're going to start at 925. I got here at 9. Don't ever listen to anything Paul so. says. God, it's all my fault. Uh, Jessica, can you tell everybody how they can find us? Uh, you can go to podcastdetroit.com and type inside real estate in the search bar or you can go to soundcloud or itunes or podbean yep. or google play etc etc I, w- I wanted to ask you how's uh, how's omega it's good yeah so so audience no we started a new company we're all partners and omega's been good man it's been uh, a wild 60 days 65 days yeah but it's been a very successful 65 days we're very happy thank you for asking i appreciate that yeah no i figured you might as well get your own plug in how are people gonna get a hold of you <laughs> yeah no it's been it's been good man uh yeah we don't care nobody ever calls us nobody, nobody, <laughs> we got nobody calls four us. watchers on this thing yeah nobody really watches it so Thank you, everyone. We will see you next week. Please like us, share us, and do all that good stuff. Love you all. Goodbye.